Uh, item four is members' questions. Can I ask members who wish to ask a supplementary question to stand up and state supplementary and also that any supplementary question will be put forward clearly and briefly. Councillor Osborne. Question number one to the leader, please. Um, Madam Mayor, I thank Councillor Osborne for his question. Um, I think on the first point, I think it's worth noting and, and emphasising that Ofsted is working to its own timetable. They will publish the report on the 16th of February. On the 22nd of February, a few days later, there will be a special meeting of Children Education Children Overview and Scrutiny Committee where that report will be discussed in full and complete detail from which inevitably a report will flow to the next council meeting where a further debate will take place. All that will happen after we know the full scale of that report. Can I, Mr. Mayor, take this opportunity to say to colleagues on both sides that this is the time to actually look at our Children's Serv Services Department and nurture it and support it. It is not an easy time for them. There are people who have worked hard in it and people who have felt a bit let down, maybe by their colleagues, maybe by, by time, maybe by themselves. But what we should avoid is to rush to quick judgments. We should avoid rushing to making those kind of judgments and statements which might start a spiral of decline which won't be in the interest of the department, this council, or most importantly, not in the interest of the people on whom, uh, for whom this department exists. It is important for us to look for what went wrong. We need to identify who got it wrong and, of course, clearly take right action, but that is when we have found out the full details and that won't be known until the report. Until that time, I think it is not in the interest of the people who we serve to actually make quick and cheap political points, but which will inevitably lead to people losing confidence in themselves, in the work they do, and in, and in discharge of very, very important duties they have on our behalf towards the children for whom we stand in loco parentis. Supplementary, Supplementary Madam Mayor. Councillor Osborne. Taking, taking to account everything that the leader has said, can I ask him this? Does he accept that any of the staff he has just referred to have done what they've done purely and totally on the direction of the political control of this council, the executive and the leader of this council? And therefore, the people who should take responsibility for what might appear in this Ofsted report are going to have to be the leader and members of the cabinet of this council. And if so, which of them shall it be? Well, I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, it's one of those sort of uh, luxuries of never being in power that you can ask for heads to roll. But what I have said just now is we should wait till we know what the report says and people who need to take responsibility will need to take responsibility. I think it is also very important that in all management, in many organizer, in big organizations and small organizations, if you rush to judgment and decapitate the, the leadership just because it would be convenient, you'd find that in fact there is not much of an organization to look after. But if Councillor Osborne is saying, will there be political uh, responsibility taken as well as administrative responsibility taken? Well, inevitably, let's see what the report says. And if the report is critical of the political leadership, then, of course, we would have to take that into account. Uh, Councillor Heaster. I was about to say Mr. Mayor, but I remember a conversation we had the other day here. Very Madam imagine. Mayor. Um, would the uh, leader agree with me that the most important thing that we can do now, prior to getting the Ofsted report, is actually to protect our children. And the emphasis really should be about the children, the parents and those people that love those children, the family and the neighbours. We shouldn't be carping about who might be in the blame game at this stage. Let's see the report and decide what to do when we see that. But today, would you agree with me, leader, we need to support the children. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I thank Councillor Heaster for his supplementary. He's absolutely right to draw our focus to 
the need to study the ship for the children. And importantly, not also to note the, the role played by foster parents and the, and the prospective adoptees of the, uh, of the children and so on. All those people have an important contribution to make to improving the lives of the children for whom we have a duty. It is important that all of those people do not feel that they might not be doing the right thing in, in, in what they have already set out to do. I say once again, it's time to actually be clear about the support that we need to give to the people who most deserve our support, children and those who look after them. Question, Question number two to the leader, please. Mr. Mayor, on a, on a point of order, um, I don't know if you've managed to come to a conclusion on Standing Order 21D. Uh, my own personal opinion is that this is, this is over the line as to where it's referring to an individual uh, officer of this council in terms of paying conditions, and therefore that the provisions in council Standing Order 21D really ought to apply for this. I don't know if there is anybody actually in the gallery or not. Uh, but, but I do think it's something that we should take seriously and always have taken this as council, is that broadly speaking we do not talk about particular terms and conditions of officer in open council. Thank you. Noted. So it's just to remind councillors that Standing Order 21 states, among other things, that it shall not be in order to raise or discuss matters relating to an employee's salary or conditions of service until the council has decided whether or not to exclude the public from the meeting. Councillor Osborne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll proceed to answer the question in view of your ruling. Um, I don't intend to go much into the kind of details that require people to leave the chamber. Um, Mr. Mayor, there is a bit of a history to this kind of request, so I think the opposition have made these kind of requests many a times. But we are here talking about measuring officer performance, and of late we have been implored by colleagues on this side as well as that side to set senior officers challenging and stretching targets. And the moment you set people challenging and setting targets, they become useless if there are targets that they will always meet. Because if you always meet targets that are supposedly stretchy, then they're obviously not stretchy enough. And inevitably on this occasion, there is a target where uh, perhaps it's stretchy and perhaps uh, uh, the chief executive may not have met it. But of course, the chief executive was asked to prepare for the Ofsted inspection and the answer sets out in great detail the preparation that he took part in himself and the, and the, and the preparation that the team he leads led, uh, took part in. The outcome of the inspection is not in his gift, of course. And if it had been the other way around, I doubt very much that he would say that it was his preparation that done it. As for the second limb of um, Councillor Osborne's question, I think... Uh, the last line in my answer says it all, frankly. If Councillor Osborne says that this is what one officer should do, does he feel that all officers in that team that might have benefited from PRP should return their cash? Of course, remember, everyone gets PRP in this council. If, as the leader says, this is all about protecting the children, and looking after the children in this case. And if as that means that suddenly some of our staff have a new set of stretching and difficult targets, can he give us an assurance tonight that there will be no rush in this process, although it may at the moment look as though there is, and none of it will be designed to sweep this matter under the carpet and none of it will be designed, as he intimated at committee, at least in part, to salvage some of his public relations. I think um, Councillor Osborne has gone down the line of uh, exactly what I hope members would not do, which is to make sort of quick and cheap political points. There is no attempt, there is no attempt at sweeping things under the carpet. We don't know what the report says 
And in any case, the report will be published not by us, but by Ofsted. We have no role in sweeping that report under the carpet because it is not our report. Perhaps that simple fact is something that Councillor Osborne would cl clasp to his bosom before he makes further statements about sweeping things under the carpet. Secondly, what we are discussing today is about making preparations to meet the challenge that the report may throw at us. We are talking about putting resources, both human and financial, aside so that whatever challenge that report throws at us, we have it in place in time to do it. This is a situation where the opposition rather that we put the cart before the horse. Why wait till the report is published before we decide how much money we would, we would put aside in order to meet the challenge? This is a prudent, sensible measure that we are taking here, identifying the cash, putting it aside to meet the challenge, identifying the right personnel who can lead us into, into that recovery, and identifying the right personnel to keep the other part of the department going steadily to, to delivering services for the adult, uh, adults for whom we have responsibilities. We are placed putting everything in order so that when the challenge comes, we are there to meet it. And if the solution that is being discussed tonight is found to be insufficient or the challenge greater, then of course we will have to think again and up what we have provided already. The leaders doing the standard uh, majority party role of trying to blame the opposition in Parliament or here, it doesn't matter, uh, of raking muck. I reject that entirely. Um, we have to wait, but, but it'll come. But in the meantime, the council is being asked to take a decision tonight when we haven't had any paper or any supporting paper. And it says, the very paper says, partly this is the problem of the unprecedented scale of change which is taking place, affecting every part of the organization. Who is responsible for that unprecedented level of change other than the Tory party, uh, the Tory party nationally, one has to admit, and the Tory party locally? It says further that there are no job descriptions. Surely this is a legitimate concern for criticism of the majority party, and that's what we're aiming at. And for you to duck out by saying it's about children, does he not think? that he should be big enough to recognize that it's about the majority party and its total failure to reorganize the council properly. Well, um, Councillor Belton obviously comes from a different angle to this. Um, this is the, the job descriptions he mentions. Well, of course, the current um, Director of Adult Children's Services has a job description. Uh, and it, that job description uh, has two limbs to it. And what we are saying is that by her concentrating on one, uh, one part of it, she will have more time and more fo fo sort of focused time to, to deal with the challenge the Ofsted report will throw at us. So it doesn't really require a huge amount of rewrite. And if Councillor, uh, Councillor Belton would like sight of that job description, I'm sure that could be made available. I think what I am saying about the party op for the, to the party opposite is Yes, of course, this is an opportunity for you to be critical of this council. In fact, it is an opportunity for my colleagues to be critical of, of, of the council's leadership. And it is right that there is criticism, but I think it is about being measured in that criticism and avoiding being responsible in that criticism so that we avoid a situation where the staff who deliver the services do not feel that they are working for an organization that is in some sort of terminal decline. If the good staff leave the council, sure as eggs, they, this council will suffer most, but of course the children even greater, sir. He must know from his own experience, long experience in public service, that once you start undermining an organization and the belief in the organization, you inevitably end in some sort of a disaster. If he is be he's beckoning disaster, maybe he should stand up and say that's what he wants to do. Madam Mayor, uh I take that as a personal attack, which should give me about 3,000 opportunities for personal explanation. It's perfectly legitimate to criticize the leadership, and that's what I've very carefully done. I personally have not 
as yet mentioned any officer, and I don't intend to. It's a criticism of you and your cabinet and your attempt to hide behind the children. Of course we're all concerned about the children, but you have to face the criticisms honestly and straightforwardly and be open with us all about how you're going to safeguard the children. Mr. Mayor, there's a, surely a personal explanation that I am not hiding behind children. I don't really want to prolong this line of things. I am not. All I am reminding this council is that this service is about and that we should not undermine the stability and the strength of this service in order to make our own political points. And I am staying away from that, and I'm certainly saying that the council needs to be careful about that. Number three to the leader, please. Um, well, you would say that this is a, a, a time when I should thank Council Lescott greatly because we are moving into slightly different territory, but an equally important territory for this Council. Because this, this question and gives me the opportunity to basically remind this Council about the way in which this Council has very responsibly dealt with its housing stock and its housing revenue account, which has released enormous amounts of funds and flexibilities for us to invest much in our stock, renew that stock, and add to that stock. And the answer lays it out. Supplementary. Uh, yeah, part of the allocation includes 58 million towards uh, social housing. Uh, can the leader inform us how many units this represents? Um, it, would you also like to speculate as to why the Labour Party didn't support this? Thank you. Well, on, on, on the latter, I, I can't really help. Um, I, I wish I could. Um, what I do know, actually, is that other Labour authorities um, cannot match what we want to do, and we will do, because they don't have the resources that we have. And that is why they're often in the vanguard of persuading other Labour London authorities to pool their housing revenue accounts and pool their headrooms in order that they can do what they should have saved to do. So I don't know whether there's anything to do with that. But to, to turning to your other uh, uh, earlier part of the supplementary, over 220 homes will be provided as a result of this money, of which several will be family homes. And I think the important thing is that uh, we will start to address with that stock the ability to, to, to provide homes for people in the general needs queue as well as people want to move around uh, the council stock uh, to, to, suit, to, to get a house that suits their needs. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor? It always annoys me the playing around with statistics. Um, this is 100 million, as I understand it, over three years, and I join with, I'm sure, all my colleagues in welcoming the 100 million over three years. But when he says ever, can I just remind him that if Unfortunately, I can go back to a time, unfortunately, I can go back to a time when um, the pound was worth a lot more than that. So can I ask the leader to produce figures um, year by year of capital additions allowing for inflation, given that the, this, this answer says ever, um, over the years? Because rather than 220 homes being produced in whatever time period, in the 70s, even Councillor Malamatori was trying to build a 1,000 uh, new homes a year. So I think it's just playing with figures. So can he please supply genuine inflation allowed for figures? Um, I thank Councillor Belton for his supplementary. I, 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 I know that Councillor Belton for many months, if not years, has been researching in the history of this council and has is privy to lots and lots and lots of papers and figures, I should think. So I don't think he needs me to tell him the answer to the question he seeks. And I don't think we should be expending council resources in doing that. But if he would like me to buy him a calculator to, to, to calculate up the inflation uh, impact of some of those figures, then I'm happy to, uh, uh, to have a subscription fund uh, uh, to which I'm sure many would want to contribute. I think Councillor Belton makes the point, which is obvious, isn't it? Yes, there have been more houses in the past, but we are talking about you know, a very, very significant capital program injection in most recent memory. And, and by all accounts, this is a huge amount of money that we are investing in the council stock, and that's what he should welcome. 
Question four to the leader, please. I thank um, Councillor Ambush for his question. I, I'm slightly confused as to what bit he was uh, referring to. Um, but you say, if we are talking about the merger of adult and children, I mean, his, his party was in support of it. And in fact, I recall that at that time, the debate was that why don't we merge admin and finance as well? Uh, because it seemed that uh, um, there's a view on the side opposite that, that, that there were two, two different departments for admin and finance were unnecessary. So I don't know what that's about. When it comes to whether Richmond uh, arrangement is something that he's talking about, well, okay, again, it's a kind of odd thing. The party opposite, as recently as the last F-Cross, talked about um, uh, is Richmond the right, right partner? Uh, why not Lambeth and Merton and Wanza together? Now, that seemed rather bigger than uh, two, so I, I don't know. I really don't, don't have any idea as to what um, uh, Councillor Ambush might be referring to. As for his second part, you know, well, um, Ms. Carr has uh, exceptional and ex excellent credentials. I don't think that is in question. I hope it isn't, at least from his point of view. We have, as I said earlier, we have to deal with this issue with some speed and some resolve. And looking around, advertising for people who might be suitable and having interview panels and taking all that time would sound like an inappropriate thing to do. This is a short-term appointment on both sides to deal with a job which we think is important, we think it's urgent, we think it needs to be resourced. Um, as for them three, it stands for itself. I think uh, uh, he can read that for himself. Could I thank the leader for his answer to my question. In relation to the third part, third part I note his refusal to give me the costs of the assistant director's leaving package out of the £220,000. As the assistant director, I understand, was an inspectors uh, in the department at a time, and the strain and stress that that put on myself and the department, I don't think it is possibly to fully prepare for that, but in a technical sense, it is as it is in the question. Um, can I take this opportunity to thank the the uh, cabinet member for taking the time out to brief me um, about the situation uh, which I appreciate um, but can I also suggest that maybe some time could have been better spent by ensuring that collectively um, all members after all we are uh, individually and corporately responsible uh, had a little bit more briefing than most of us did, and that in particular, perhaps the leadership of the majority party might have taken the time out to uh, consult with the leadership in the broad sense of the minority party, so that at least we had some notification, um, I make the exception of the briefing you gave me, um, before the committee came. Um, I thank the member for his supplementary and um, I just have to remind um, all members that this report is embargoed. Ofsted is a government department and they have embargoed any release apart from to, very, uh, to a few very um, specific individuals who have access to the report. We haven't received the report ourselves yet. We are acting on a verbal feedback that officers gave us on the, day, on the last day of the inspection. I personally felt it was necessary on a very confidential basis um, to brief Councillor Belton as the opposition spokesperson um, because I assume that he will be leading um, uh, the opposition to the report and therefore I felt it was necessary to prepare him. Permitry, Madam Mayor, uh, would the Cabinet member agree with me that this council shouldn't be surprised that the criteria now adopted by Ofsted is a lot stricter than it used to be with the baby pee scandal in Haringey, the terrible activities that were going on in Rotherham, and that the, a number of authorities have now had Ofsteds which have reduced 
down in the, in the scale, uh, particularly outside of London, but in London as well, um, where um, I could name about a dozen uh, authorities who already have had offsets um, reduced, in, in, uh, reduced down because of the more stringent standards, rightly, that Ofsted is now imposing because of those terrible problems that occurred in Haringey um, and in Rotherham. Um, I thank the member for the question. He is, of course, absolutely right. And since the um, uh, inspection finished, I spent an awful lot of time reading some of those uh, inspection reports. Um, and patiently, uh, with the regi regime changes and with the changing emphasis from government, quite rightly, particularly on um, children that are likely to be um, uh, sexually exploited, the game has changed. And um, social service, children's social services departments throughout the country haven't made the necessary change as quickly as we perhaps should have done. I mean, just uh, uh, out of information, out of the 76 authorities that have been inspected in the last year, 59 of those have received unsatisfactory offsteads. Um, and of those, 40% have fallen from either outstanding or good. There isn't a single children's social services department in the country that is now graded as outstanding. And there are only 17 that have received a good judgment. So we, as a country, have got to get to grips with this and um, sort it out for the sake of the children. Could I remind members to keep the supplement? Question number 11 to the Cabinet member. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to thank uh, the Councillor for his question, and the answer is very succinct and is included in the papers. Supplementary? Thank the cabinet member for his uh, answer. I do uh, appreciate the issue of the rising uh, cost pressures. Um, I'm sure, however, he will agree that uh, if the council is going to apply the 2% uh, precept, then uh, residents uh, have uh, a right to uh, receive some kind of account of what they're going to get for that uh, precept, that additional uh, money. So in that case, can he actually clarify which services he's going to guarantee to uh, protect with the additional money that the uh, precept will raise. I thank uh, the councillor for his supplementary. I think it would be remiss of me at this stage to specifically say that this service is going to get X and that service is going to get Y. But I, I think it's important to recognise that uh, within the Adult Social Services Division, um, our budget for 2015-16 is just over £100 million. Uh, of which we spend about £35 million on older people and sensory and physical disabilities. We spend £39 million on people with learning disabilities um, and about £8.5 million on people with mental health issues. And as those make up the major issue or the major part of uh, something like 82% of the total number of people that we are supporting, I would think it would be reasonable to suspect that the people in, who we support in those areas are going to be, continue to be supported to the best of our ability and uh, receive the services that, uh, to which they're entitled uh, and uh, commensurate with their conditions. Second supplementary. Um, would the Cabinet member please um, uh, care to reassure us that most of the adult social services spending isn't actually discretionary. You can't decide whether you're going to spend on people with learning disabilities or people who are blind or people who are, have Alzheimer's. You have to spend according to the need of the individual. So to try and pigeonhole different bits of money for different bits is not the way it works. I thank the councillor, I thank the councillor for her very succinct question and uh, yes I would confirm that. Uh, but I think it's significant to say that um, very little of the adult services uh, budget is uh, put on or spent on um, items which we have any control over at all. The majority of the stuff we spend is uh, dictated by 
uh, central government and by the National Health Service uh, throughout the country. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Graham for her uh, question. Um, yes, I, I mean, I agree with her that uh, it is a little bit surprising that, uh, uh, you know, for years and years and years, the opposition have been going on about how high the rents are and they should be reduced. Uh, uh, and uh, here we've reduced them and um, they voted against it twice, uh, once at committee and uh, once at uh, the council meeting. I suppose it's the sort of usual knee-jerk reaction, you know, we're proposing something must be wrong. Um, as for the uh, second part of the question about what do I think the uh, tenants who will benefit from this, the 5,000 tenants who will benefit from a reduction in, from a rent, a reduction in rent, rent will think, um, I suppose it, they probably would think the same as uh, that uh, report of the Labour Party that uh, got released recently, I think it wasn't released officially, that concluded that most of their members hadn't frankly got a clue what it was like to... Uh, to be on a low income because most of them aren't. And I suspect the tenants would probably think that uh, this particular decision by Wandsworth uh, Labour councillors to vote against a reduction in rents uh, is perhaps uh, a true reflection of the present Labour Party. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Um, well, can I just assure Councillor and Mrs Graham, um, we made it clear at the time those votes were against a sort of package of uh, Tory housing policies, not this proposal. We'll, we'll come to that vote later. but. Does the Cabinet member recall that he voted this time last year for 10 years of above inflation rent rises? Uh, and does he recall in committee we said it would be comical for either party to pretend that they had any power to do anything other for the next four years than cut rents by 1% each year? Um, I, well, thank you. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Hogg for his supplementary. Um, uh, I certainly probably recall the first one. I, I can't say I recall the second, but if he, if he says that was uh, what was uh, discussed, then, then I have no reason to doubt that. Um, I also recall, of course, that uh, Councillor Hogg was getting very excited about the uh, £180 billion pounds that we were going to be having in the housing revenue account uh, in 30 years' time, and uh, how were we going to go about spending this, uh, this money? And uh, I certainly remember, recall definitely saying at the time that I almost certainly myself wouldn't be there in 30 years' time to see what the, uh, the outcome of that was, uh, but I suspected neither with the £1.8 billion either, and of course that is proving to be the case. I ask the questions of the Cabinet Member on behalf of Councillor MacDonald. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to thank uh, the Councillor for the question on behalf of Councillor uh, MacDonald. Um, as, uh, as I'm sure uh, uh, he is aware, um, the original housing revenue account buyout uh, was initiated by uh, John MacDonald, who in my view is an extraordinarily good uh, housing minister. And, um, uh, probably one of the longest serving we've had and indeed still holds that shadow role. Uh, I personally feel he perhaps should be in a slightly more elevated position, but um, there we are. It, it was his idea. It was carried forward by the coalition government. Uh, it, it was an extremely good idea uh, and it did free up um, the rather iniquitous situation that uh, not 1% of uh, rents would go, but 25% of our tenants would go. Uh, so that did free uh, that particular one up. Um, I think it's slightly... Uh, insidious really to say that uh, the councils had full control over rent setting uh, even uh, then. We most certainly did not. Uh, all governments have uh, tended to, uh, to uh, make suggestions and impositions, so this is really uh, frankly uh, no different. Um, again, as I said in, in the answer to my previous question, um, very good news for our working tenants. 30% of our tenants uh, do not receive uh, housing benefits, so very good news for them. Um, Yes, indeed, it will reduce uh, our uh, income in the housing revenue account, there's no doubt about that, uh, but uh, savings are being made. I will uh, categorically assure the council that none of our tenants or leaseholders uh, will notice this uh, particular reduction in revenue in the form of um, deteriorating services. We will ensure that we continue to provide the high level of service that our tenants uh, expect. Um, turning now to the sort of second paragraph of my 
question. I know there's a, a lot of interest in the council in uh, private landlords, and it's a little bit surprising that on the one hand, uh, the councillor doesn't want us to, uh, the government, anybody to interfere with council rents, but it's perfectly in order for a mayoral candidate to interfere in private rents. It does seem uh, slightly odd. So either you do one or you do the other, or you do both, or you do neither. So that will be an interesting uh, thing to suggest. Um, that was all I can add, really. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor, whilst we're on the subject of Mr. Khan and private landlords, um, I wonder, um, I wonder whether uh, the cabinet members, I wonder whether the cabinet members at uh, I scanned across an article in the most recent edition of Private Eye, which seems to suggest that, um, for Mr. Khan's uh, declaration of interest of the approximately 100,000 he's taken in the last year from private property firms, about 20,000 seems to have come from one Dr. Ansari of Croydon. Um, who apparently came in for a lot of criticism from Croydon, the Croydon Labour Party over his opposition to that borough's landlord licensing scheme. Does he think that Dr Ansari is likely to um, react well to Mr Khan's intention to cut his income in this way? And because of the... Um, con yes, there is a question. Because of the concern that had been raised in Croydon, can he assure us that Dr Ansari has no involvement with Wandsworth Council? Uh, well, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Councillor Peter Ginn for his question. Um, uh, like him, I uh, subscribe to Private Eye, I have been for many years. Uh, I do recall uh, seeing that particular article, and indeed I think there have been uh, other articles about uh, Dr Ansari and his contributions to the Labour Party. Uh, I believe he was actually a minister of the Labour Party in Croydon uh, and has a close relationship with Sadiq Khan. Um, but you're judged by the company you keep, really. Um, as regards to... Uh, yes, he certainly doesn't seem to be one of the sort of landlords you might have liked to have to do with. Um, whether or not he has any properties in Wandsworth, I'm afraid I really don't know, is the honest answer to that one. Um, however, I do know there's been a lot of interest in, uh, in these landlords uh, recently, so I will make it my business to find out if he has any properties in the borough, if I can find anything more, uh, and I will indeed uh, let councillors know, and I hope Madam Mayor will be if I write to councillors. Second supplementary. Second supplementary. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I thank the Cabinet Member for including some good jokes in his reply. Um, we, we'll note his praise for John McDonnell as being an excellent uh, financier. I suspect he meant to say John Healy, the, the former uh, <laughs> housing minister, but it, it's on the record now. And that's pretty good. I, I also liked his gag about our right to control our housing finances has been put on pause for a few years and that residents will not notice £850 million missing from our rent account. Um, even by his usual standards, this is pretty pantomime. Can he answer, does he want four years of rent increases, four years of rent cuts, or ten years of rent increases? Or can't he make up his mind? Um, first of all, I, I'd like to apologise to John Healy. That to actually compare somebody as uh, competent as John Healy with uh, John McDonnell is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, frankly, uh, uh, unbelievable, really. Um, it would be like saying that Councillor Daly does a good job as whipping his group and keeping them all under control. Um, that, you know, that would be unforgivable, too. Um, I, I actually think, in a way, sometimes we have to accept the fact that um, we elect governments. We may or not, may not like their decisions, but uh, people elect governments, and uh, Parliament rules this country. And if it's the law of the land, then we have to abide by the law. We're not like Claycross Council in the 1980s or Lambeth going off setting illegal budgets and being surcharged and whatever. That is wholly irresponsible. And I would very much hope that that type of thinking in the Labour Party is gone. Of course, under the new regime, who knows? You know, we've gone through prudence who went out the window. Progress soon went. Now we've got momentum. Soon it'll be oblivion. Number 14, Madam Mayor. I thank the Councillor for his question. As the answer points out, nearly half of those who could be affected by this change uh, will be subject to protection. Supplementary. <coughs> it, I thank the, the Member for his response. Is, is the Cabinet a, a member aware that national expenditure on council tax benefit over the period 1997 to 2010 more than doubled to a figure of nearly £4 billion per annum? Does he agree Wandsworth should protect vulnerable households while also encouraging other households 
to come off of benefits and into work. Well, I certainly would agree. The amount concerned is staggering, although, of course, the good thing to point out, at least in ones that is relatively low, because, of course, we have made sure that the council tax is kept low, which is therefore good news both for people who pay the council tax and for taxpayers in general. Second supplementary. Uh, uh, to the uh, Cabinet member, um, we obviously are more concerned about the 5,000 who aren't protected. And in particular, would he comment on the failure to protect uh, parents with children between the age of three and five, which would cost about 50,000, about a tenth of what we're being asked to spend on a management reorganization in the children's services. And will the failure to protect them not have a knock-on effect and actually place yet more pressure on our embattled children's services department? I thank the Councillor for his question. The proposals which we put, have put in place, and let's point, I should point out we're still spending seven and a half million in this area, so it's very substantial, and it's right that we should look at it, are still some of the most generous uh, across London. So I think they are a sensible and reasonable way, way forward. Uh, 